Welcome back to It's Not a Tiny House podcast, where your hosts Wyatt Reed and Barna Casa talk about all things housing while working on creating a unique and affordable housing solution in rural Colorado. They cover everything you need to know from city code to financing by interviewing experts and sharing their personal experience so you can have the knowledge to overcome the problems nobody else is talking about. And now, on to the podcast. So I was talking about the chicken coops. I really don't need them, so I'm thinking about converting them into <laughs> a small house. <laughs> Not a tiny house, a small right. house. Is it a micro house at that point? It's because it's, How big is a chicken coop? I, please define micro. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, Actually, for two? <laughs> is that some game show? <laughs> IRC 2018 book. We were totally wrong. Technically, this is a tiny house podcast because <laughs> it's anything under 400 square feet. It's in the 2018 code. We you got to change your logo? No, we're everything. Not we we got to change Hold everything. We're not we got to start over. Shit. We're going to scrap everything. So you mean the Sage, th- thanks th- for all the hard work. Throw it all away. You mean the three we'll viewers that you have? Melt it. Or listeners. I'm sorry, eight Dude, listeners. <laughs> and in, in truth and fairness up. to that, I'm one of them. So I don't, so, I, I don't know. And Sage is Sage is two. Brad, listen. You four. <laughs> yeah. We only have one person listening right now that's no, not in this here. room yeah what's up bro yeah yeah it's nice to have a conversation with you <laughs> steve uh, you, you know great. there's another chair here you should just come down seriously whatever you have to contribute listen to yourself like i do we should do that like find <laughs> out our listeners one listener's name and just and just every day like Hey Steve, how you doing today? Well, that's the other thing about it, right? Like right now, we don't, we don't have. This is going um, out to Steve. Our sample size would be too small if we asked our audience any questions right. because it's my fucking mom and the other three people. Well, this here. is what's gonna happen though. <laughs> like it, it. It's not Aaron. Like, and, it's it's not anybody. And because like, I just I swore, am, is in my family or or my girlfriend because she's like I'm not fucking listening to podcasts. Hundred percent. That's here. that's Aaron. This is what's gonna happen though. Yep. This thing's gonna blow up and it's gonna get big. And then people are gonna binge on like starting from. I think it needs number longer. one, a larger body because that's what I've done. I found podcasts, and I'm like, this is great. So I just start at number one. Yep, yep. So and they're gonna the hear all this. With like but a- we got nothing going on. So um, I think we should say like who we're actually talking to. So we're talking to Jeffrey Wilkins today. He's uh, the most famous person you've never heard of. <laughs> He's he's put so, more famous so people got, in front of you. I have so <laughs> I've got his resume here. Um, no, no. <laughs> you have his so, IBD? No, no, so, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. So his name a is a little bit. Let's do a so little. So Jeffrey Wilkins. No, no. Uh, <laughs> it's too late. Call him Wilco. He's got it. Mm-hmm. But I can't see. I didn't bring my glasses, so I got to hold it out here. So you're a cinematographer. You live in L.A., Westcliff, Colorado, and Tennessee now, right? So. Man of many you states. might, you know, eventually you'll make it, man. I mean, I'm, I have hope for you. Yet you might be able to. He's buy up a, and comers. You man. might be able to buy a house. I just eventually. want a jersey I mean, from you guys. I want that eighth jersey. Yeah. Okay. I mean, go Wyatt, playing. I'm just playing off the last uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. you actually listen to all I the listen podcasts. To all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, like, and you're still here. Ears aren't bleeding. It's well, great. that's the other thing. That's the last podcast that you heard. Now we've got six in the can. I oh, fuck! Really? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we, nobody's going to hear this until fucking next year, oh, bro. Right. I mean, Good. this whole COVID <laughs> discussion is going to be over with. But but Hopefully keep not. in mind, we're hoping uh, that your star power is what's going to really launch this <laughs> podcast. This so I mean, that that's why you're here. We're going to be like, your name's going to be on there. You get searched more Wilkins. than we do. So actually, you're doing yeah. us a favor. So, okay, <laughs> just for all our listeners, you've uh, done work on The Voice, right? Can we the, talk about the, this? the Apprentice? Uh, that's my fault. Sorry. Uh, Shark Tank. <laughs> Shark Tank. Yes. A- amazing race. That was a great response. <clears throat> I think so. Millionaire matchmaker. Uh, I. These are you picked the wrong one. American Guns. <laughs> this is fun. What, I mean, <laughs> you picked the am wrong I, one. Am I correct? Yeah, but those are just some of the. What credits. are the? Well, this is like 2011. So basically, your IMDb profile ends in 2017. What have you been doing with your time in the last four years? Oh, that's building okay. houses. Yeah, big houses. How big? <laughs> Large. I mean, your your place in Westcliff. How big is that? Uh, it's uh, what is it? Nine hundred square feet, right? Yeah, which no, is it's, it's about twelve. 
Because I added a... Because you had a second floor, yeah. right. basically. But even you, you still, man, roof. traditional standards, that's not a huge house. No, it's perfect for it's me. The, it's a nice size house. For two people, really. Exactly. So you can get two in there comfortably. Totally comfortable. Uh, yeah, I mean, Do you get very a third person? You have an extra bedroom there, too. Yeah. And I want to add on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean... Because there's, yeah, there's a little outbuilding Napoleon that syndrome. has my, we get it. Has my uh, batteries <laughs> for okay. my solar. Actually, so and, and they're off grid. Yeah, yeah. That right. was something that we had talked about um, when when you and I had met one another. You were working on a staircase. Um, got a little help um, getting kind of some stair treads or not treads. Uh, it was your for stair the barn, tags. yeah. Yep, for for your stuff figured out. And then we began a conversation, and and unfortunately, I've been a little too busy to do yeah. a lot uh, with you on that. But it was a conversation about the off-grid stuff. Right. Oh, that's and, right. Right. Because, oh, yeah. We get, you helped me get solar panels. Yeah, because you were looking for solar panels. Yeah, because the ones and, I had were from 96. <laughs> and, and, right, exactly. And, and so the, life, the lifetime on them at crazy. that point is shot. And the technology, again, like everything else today is so much more efficient and better. So I got six of them, and I got so much power. It's awesome. So six panels, are they 325s? I don't know. 275s, whatever you whatever the turn me on to. Okay. And um, so... Up, up in uh, in Westcliff, solar strictly off grid from your power standpoint, Correct. right? So you own your power, and this is a conversation that that we had had originally with um, the Off Grid Academy, which is um, so you take a Fire Age home, which is what uh, we build over at the industrial, okay, and then now you can basically turn it into a an a purely off grid small shipping yeah. container house, right? Yeah, and that was where that was where we had overlap with each other because we were talking about how to do this and how to kind of do it in Westcliff because there's no power. It's on, it's in the middle of a fucking mountain range. And if you don't have power to your lot, solar is your best option because we yeah. have a ton of sun great. and it works great as long as you know what you're doing with it. And as long as your other systems are built to I, suit. I have a generator and, and you have in two case, is one. And yeah. you also have wind, right? You got the little wind gen doesn't work that well. Well, I do. Um, I, I asked whoever, I think my, solar guy and he was like doesn't really produce that much it's not really worth unless no, you had a big huge big fan you know, yeah and a big probably. power bank and a lot of times they'll use those for like a well pump right so uh because you don't you're not constantly running water so you're not constantly pulling power and um they'll use them for like well pumps and shit like that yeah yeah just because it's uh the, the wattage that they can provide um is not super high right and um every time you have wind you can but you got plenty of wind up there, right? You got plenty of wind, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No shortage of, of wind. But I, I like being off the grid. I, yeah. I, I think even places that are on grid should be off the grid. <laughs> well, and plenty... I mean, think about it. If you're in Texas with that fiasco, yep. Yeah. You know, we talked about the, uh, solar, the the benefits of having the, the panels on your roof, right? And so there's a really cool discussion that people have bring. I have a problem with that on the roof. I do. And and I Why? want I want to hear about that. Well, because um, my home in L.A. needed a new roof, and it was like anytime you screw a screw into a roof, it's potential leak. And so I was actually thinking about you can put them on the roof, but I was thinking about coming on the side of the what's the eaves, not mm -hmm. the eaves um, um, for the, your soffits and yeah, underneath it, just I mean, just on the side, so you don't attach to the roof, and then build like a rail system. Yeah, and then just have it sit maybe on the roof with no. And then and then and then also on top of that, I think it'd be a good idea on let's say the other side or whatever. I don't know. I just play it out. I, th I always thought it would be a good idea to you know because the house gets hot because the sun's hitting it right. Right. And then um, I thought it'd be neat to to shadow your house with like some kind of uh, just a anything to shadow shade sail a some shade sh a shade yeah some over your house yep. And especially, but I guess in, solar panels could do that. Yeah. So they can, and, and right. So, like for me, with solar panels, a lot of people go, but leave space in between so the air can go. There's through. There's supposed to be a gap so right. that those panels can cool anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um. And so, uh, and you're 100 percent spot on. I hate penetrations into roofs myself because I'm worried about yeah leaks. Right. Um. But not everybody's got an expanse where they can do a, a PV array that's not right. on their roof. Right. And it's like, um, it's a it's a good place. Is it perfect? No, but it's it's the best place for right. many people. It's, it's up out of the way, yeah. you know, that kind of shit. And right. you don't have power cords and, and trying to send electricity over great distances. And right. that's one of the cool things I about see. lower voltages. And this is like when the discussions back in the day between 
Tesla and Edison, and they were trying to figure out oh, right. AC, DC right, right, right. stuff, right? I know all about to that. To localize yeah. shit right. is DC. Right. And that's 12-volt stuff or, right. or 24 up to, f- whatever, 48, really. Right. But um, but to the, send electricity long distances, long distances AC had to be AC. Yeah, right. yeah. And so um, my thing with that And is, it's safer, DC. It's safer. When the film business, mm-hmm. you know, if you're around Lower water. Lower voltages. Yeah, you're on DC. Right. And, and the awesome thing is anything under 24 point some odd volts, there isn't actual code for it. So you can do it. Oh. You can wire your own stuff as long as it's low voltage. And that's, you know what you're gonna, doing. Yep. Well, <laughs> that would you're not, not going to be me. And the reason, the reason <laughs> though, that that's There's not, a YouTube channel you can oh, get, right. get, get caught up. I forgot about Well, YouTube. the reason it's not regulated yeah. is because it's not dangerous. Sure. We're in America. We regulate everything. Which is good. Right? And overdo it. So it's probably not even dangerous until you get to a little higher voltages. And you can't quote me on that, but that's how the code reads. Anything low voltage, there isn't code for it. All right. Right? Sure. So a lot of the times, smaller applications for solar work good, but but the conversation comes from people where they go, well, it's not net carbon zero or net zero because the panels time out, and now you have a wasted panel, right, where you have to recycle all of the inputs to create a solar panel because you said like – you mean the raw materials? The raw to build materials, it, right? Yeah. To build it costs. So yeah. they go. I've heard that. Yeah, and we've you know, all like, heard that. And like I go batteries and everything. Yeah, it's, yeah. Cost, it's like batteries are a just, bigger problem. Yeah. Um, than the panels themselves, because Barna knows how to recycle and repurpose a ton of shit. I too, uh, do that, and yeah. it's like and me, and and so do you, and yeah. so we go take the fucking panel and turn it into something else. Turn it into an awning. Put sure. another panel over the top of it. Yeah. It's already. It's a structure. Yeah, it's the structures there. Why throw it away? They're made so it's a waterproof a surface yeah. that you can turn into your walls. I mean, it could literally table be core. anything. You could use it I, for the table I was going to say, core. they're really actually kind can, of interesting anything. looking. You, yeah. could, you could line it up and be super cool. It's, it's your new shower surround, right? Okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to go there, but like but in your office or something. You could, rain, so <laughs> yeah. sure. you could put it in your office and then throw some kind of cool light on it. Yeah. You know, like on a wall, just make a whole wall of them. So my cool. argument to, to that of... Well, or even solar or your ceiling. Exactly. You your ceiling oh, panels. That'd yep. be fucking... But I like that argument. So I've heard that a lot. Um, when yeah. we lived up in Lakewood and we had a like a running club and sure. some guy was kind of uh, against uh, solar and all that. And he starts going into, well, you got to make it and it only lasts so long. And so it's it's not like it doesn't take fossil fuels to actually produce a solar panel but i'm like but every little bit of power that comes out of it after that is free so there's your startup cost compare it to oil where you have to start a drill for it where you got like all your startup costs and every single drop has to be produced every single time and transported and and refined the international crap that goes along with that you know yeah. trying to keep in ties with you know oil producing nations well and we've yes. even seen even <laughs> you know what i mean shipping it's oil. almost like opec was a bad idea huh <laughs> if you guys want to jump down that one i mean by all means no, chase, sorry, sorry. chase that rabbit go ahead go ahead i guess all i was saying was i don't agree with that argument because that is like a finite like the conversation's over and i'm like bullshit if we need, to, if we create a large enough problem that we have a surplus of dead solar panels just laying all over Hell's Half Acre like we do plastic and everything right now, right. then we'll figure out a way to recycle it. But we've already just come up with seven good ideas of where these items can go and how they can be repurposed. So I hear but, your argument and I see your argument, like from the from I, those folks, not yours. Um, but it's like fuck that. I I think I would enjoy those. I think a lot of people sure. are going to. It's not gonna, for everybody. Either. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be like, "I don't want that for my wall." Fair enough. Always true, and and that we go back to the capitalistic. Uh, if somebody, but if likes you it, they were buy. able to sell it in a way, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, it's all marketing, man. Yeah, That's especially cool. if you're, you know, if you knew you're helping the planet out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like you take pride in, hey, I'm helping the planet out. You know what I mean? And and there's a there's a growing population, I think, of of people that are more motivated to making sure of two things. One, they're helping the planet. Two, their neighbor's the person who gets the money if they're doing business, right? Like the local movement that we were talking just about baked goods or eggs or fucking anything. Like I would rather buy something right. from you Got knowing it. that you get the money. Right, right, right. For than, sure. Than from somebody. Yeah, you don't even know. That I don't know That's yeah. that's or a corporation that's a thousand miles from yeah. me that I don't care about, Copy right? Copy that. And so I think that that what we're noticing and and you brought this up earlier when we were talking like 
the next generation that's coming through, call it the younger population, if you will, does have a different modus of operation than the previous. Better, worse, not really here to debate that. Different, definitely. Is that what you've seen? Because now you're going from L.A. to Colorado to Tennessee. I'm assuming that you're working with people older, younger, Mm -hmm. all over the place. Are you seeing that as a – is that trending up? Like, are you noticing that people think that way? Um, or or what's it like in your uh, in your I, working I, field? To be honest with you, I don't talk to the people that I work with about things like that. Because sure. most, most people aren't interested in building and stuff. I mean, a lot of people, I think, that are younger, too, or just they don't know how to milk a cow. They don't know how to, you know sure. what I mean? They're, they're just, they can't do a lot of but things. But do you think that they want <laughs> Do you know to, what I mean? Do you think that it's because they haven't had access to it? I would, say that, I would say that. Or is it the location? So, I mean, there's a big difference between L.A., Westcliff, yes. and Tennessee, sure. right? I mean, yeah. Which is, I, I lived in Memphis. Super cool spread, like, yeah. Memphis, not that far from Ohio, but a world apart, yeah. right? And I then think, I think, Colorado's very, vastly different from I don't that. know. I just – it's just probably a generational thing. You know, it's like, you know, when I grew up, I mowed the yard when I was 12. And, sure. You know, I did stuff and – we went out playing in the yard and we didn't you know we didn't have computers we didn't sit inside so right we just and, did stuff we, and, and we all have the same perception now too that that technology as good as it has been has also created a generation of parents using those tools right by handing them to a child to right. do the babysitting right is that's like tv it's in my generation yeah. 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 yeah which is when i say stuff like that I'm not challenging other people's parenting techniques. I'm not a fucking parent. I have no right to do that. Right. But isn't that what we're watching? I and think then so. We're, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have any kids other than my stepkids, but I think if I did, when I was younger, had kids, I, I would just, I would have had them do things. Even, One would even have, though, would have I've, thought, I've yeah. heard parents nowadays that say, you know, you have Luna Tyne on this device. Right. You know what I mean? Which is great. And they get them outside <laughs> and do things and museums and I love that. Yep. I agree. And I, I, I had a different upbringing because I think I was still plenty, 20 years behind where everybody was at. They never had to set a limit for me on a television. I wasn't fucking interested in it. Right. I was like, I was, I'm a farm kid from the middle of nowhere, yeah. you know? And so it was like, and, and we had access to things. Our, our father made sure that we had four wheelers to ride and snowmobiles to ride. And I had hockey to practice and baseball to practice and all these things that like being inside sucked it's like yeah what's like the, what's the one toy i grew up with i think it was outside. called outside yeah, yeah. and, and um, we didn't have any of that stuff either i think we had a bicycle that was yeah. like handed had, down over like three four generations yeah at, yeah i don't think my parents oh, right. even had a car when right, i was right. little yeah like, totally <laughs> oh, i think gotta be brand new like you walked everywhere like yeah you know everything's gotta be brand new now that's great. Yeah. It drives me even though the quality. Is no, just my crap. my aunt and uncle ride bicycles that are their great grandparents' bicycles. That's so. They're dumb. that old, like hundreds of year old bicycles. <laughs> they don't make them like they I mean, used to. Not very game. efficient, right. but who cares? Bicycle, got, you can just go to the grocery store yeah. on the corner, two blocks away. Yeah, yeah. Put the it's food got in the soul basket anyway. and ride back, That's right? Like, yeah, it's it. got yeah. some history. Hey, yeah, if it's it not efficient, cool. You just work harder and you get your exercise. Oh man, we get photos. We have photos like there's a little baby seat. On the the top rail of the bicycle frame, and we have photos. You're gonna cut of all generations. Out, right? Yeah. Hey, come on, man. I'm telling you. No, story. no, it's fine. I just, There's I, photos of multiple generations with fucking... babies on that same bicycle, and then my cousin was riding it. You're a dick. Don't <laughs> so, cut that out. <laughs> so, but but to bring it back to what we've talked. So about. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back to what we're here to talk about. No, that, yeah, that's all important to the conversation, right? But yeah, fuck you too. LA <laughs> four wheeler spoiled. I know, dude. Spoiled, I was like, yeah, we came from brat, fucking dude. decadence, man. I'm not I fucking dirt. around. I know that. I'm aware. I had dirt and a river and a bicycle. I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> all right, bring it back, babe. So what I'm trying to ask you is, three states across the country working with people not not talking to them maybe yeah are you seeing um are you seeing small units in the backyards of places have you oh, noticed God. tiny houses LA, la is going nuts full of their adus mm-hmm. everybody do you I have mean, it's crazy any thoughts on them one way or the other and you don't have to like them i'm just curious no, i know what your thoughts um are. i hate to see neighborhoods um you know like when i lived in denver and when i uh, had my house there yeah um cute little homes you know near wash park 
and they started mowing them down and putting up mansions. Fucking mausoleums. You know, yeah. yeah. And, and they didn't really <laughs> fit with the uh, with the neighborhood, you know? They, right. And so it kind of destroyed the, I think, the neighborhood. You know what I mean? So that's upsetting. Um, I understand people want bigger homes and stuff, um, but I don't know. It seems. See, and I, uh, that's fine. And that was and like different. The, like the ADUs in L.A., mm-hmm. uh, you know, again, same thing. You know, they're like this one house down the street from me. They basically took the house that was there, and the guy did a really nice job. But he made it almost into a modern house, you know, two stories. I think it's two or three homes that they – Oh, know. wow. Yeah. And then the guy down – you know, everybody's converting their garages. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so – and there's – the one thing about Los Angeles that I don't like, that I do like about Denver is uh, there's no open space at all. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, the, the only park that's near me is uh, right up butted up against the uh, freeway. Oh, gross. And uh, it's just a strip. It was like extra land, and they turned <laughs> it into a park. And uh, and now, because of the homeless situation, sure. they converted that park, and they're spending, I think, 2 or $3 million, and they're building these 8 by 8 little homes for the, the homeless. Chefs, the... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we had a conversation recently with, uh, with a gentleman and uh, his organization that's doing something similar to that up in Denver. And... Um, the, the costs that they that he was sharing with us for those were ten by tens, yeah, ten, hundred square foot how uh, m- micro yeah it's home just basically whatever the bed. hell you want to call it it's a fucking shed it's okay? a shed because it had no plumbing he's had no nothing plumbing. it was literally just a place to put your stuff it was a wooden bed. tent that's how I kind of view the way sure. that, that is okay because right? yeah. it has no climate just to keep control. them out from underneath the cool keep there your is stuff just, safe so you can actually yeah. go somewhere and not right. have all your yeah. shit go and, and they're mov- they're movable right so I mean you can pick them up with uh, with a, a mule or a forklift or whatever mule um, is basically a forklift that's off road version okay um, I yeah mules a not not the old school mule mule. And uh, that that works really good. Ten and twenty thousand dollars. I mean, that's a pretty good range. But that's what he was kind of yeah. saying. What a, a fifteen yeah. to twenty? Yeah, yeah. And somebody's uh, getting paid. Somebody's getting paid, and that's a hundred percent. Because and that's without a bathroom in it. And and Barna and I. And that's why I was saying this. The, these homes that I'm telling you about. I was like two, three million dollars. I was like, oh, for what? Yeah. You kidding me? No, it's yeah. it's crazy. So somebody's getting some kickback. And probably. and yeah. the other things there that are at work against us right now are usually uh, the amount of paperwork and and, oh. and bullshit required from the bureaucracy. Oh right. For one, and that's time, and that's somebody's expertise and money. And architects and engineers are not inexpensive. Right. Right. Structure. Um, yeah. yeah. And and it's important until you kind of go. We have one that's not going to break. Right. Like like. I talked to the structural what engineer. What's not going to break? Like the house. Like a, a, here's our one model that we oh. can replicate over and over oh, and over okay. and over and over okay. and over again, right? I talked to the structural engineer about shipping containers because the conversation was going from a foundation to a house uh, of a house that we were doing to shipping containers. And essentially what he said to me was, they're stupid to me because I have to do engineering on them that we all know is going to be fine. Oh, right. Because he's like, I to go through it, he didn't want to spend his time. Well, let me ask you this question: If you if, if you if you did that sure. through the one, mm-hmm. would you have to do it again and again if you just replicated the same thing over and a over? A lot and over? of that has to do with your local. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of that has to do with your if local. If you did it once and you're just repeating what you did, why do you? Because there it? are variations in how they're created and where they're built. Not huge variations because they all have to fit together. Yeah. So if, if you look at the shipping container uh, placard, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have three or four different ones types. Okay, they're all slightly different. So yeah, but, like but, how much but, weight they'll hold. And, so here's the best part. I have but it But not head. enough to matter. Like exactly. it, it holds 514,000 pounds. Exactly. The other one holds 519,000 pounds. Exactly. Like that's do what you I'm have saying. to re-engineer it? So Probably I, not. <laughs> so only because I was, I thought it was really funny. I go, okay, so someone says, what's the, you know, what's the snow load of a shipping container, right? And, and for those who may be listening that want to go, well, they're stronger at the four corners. Again, we've been here and I know the answer. I know what you're saying. 500,000 pounds on 320 square feet. Okay. I'm doing the math right now on my calculator. That's a that's, phone. That's, that's 1,562 and a half pounds per square foot. That's well over 10 times the building requirement. So I rest my case. Shipping containers offer you the 
fastest way, the least expense, yeah. and the most mobile solution to yeah. what we've been talking about. Yeah. And as long as they fit the square footage. But what we've hit with people is, well, they look like shipping containers. I'm like, I'm aware of that. There's a steel building, right? They look like they look like uh, an industrial thing. Case. And so architecturally, okay. they may not match. Right. And I go, okay. That's easy fix. Yeah, that's a real easy fix. If you want to spend five grand on siding, right. do it. If we're talking about a homeless situation, right. we're talking about oh. truly low income, oh. you have 14-gauge steel siding that you want me to put an inferior product on that's going to age faster and right. and cost more money? Right. There's no point. Right. This is the this is the solution for low cost. Just just putting it out. So, there. Okay. The military oh. fucking uses them. I just had a conversation this morning with a guy who's a, a SOCOM operator. That's like, yeah, dude, I've lived in all these years. I was gonna years. say the uh, the I forget what you call it, a place where they eat at Universal Studios. Yeah, they uh, concession. What is it called? Commissary. 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 Yeah. yeah, commissary. Thanks. Uh, Why I would I they, know? I've never I think, been to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I think they closed. We're not famous like they, you, man. They closed Sorry. the one uh, that's that was in the building, and they opened. They uh, got a couple storage containers, and and they I think they put siding on them or something. They do, and, and then, then they're, it's all there reclaimed are, wood, whatever, and yep. they look amazing. Yeah, I think I sent you a picture. Did I not send you? I know no, that no. you've talked to. No, about just it just you and Kevin Hart, man. <laughs> I know that I heard you talk about it a little bit once when we were maybe, maybe it was you first, that was telling yeah. me. Yeah, and it's like yes, you you can clad it the exterior really nice. of it with something as long as you're understanding two things: you're going to add cost, and you're going to put an inferior product on the exterior and, of a and probably thing. drill holes. Like that goes right. back to the roof conversation. Exactly. Like when you're putting oh, right. solar panels on the roof, try not to put new holes in Got your roof it. that's yeah. supposed to be waterproof. So you take a shipping container that's waterproof. And add right, holes, whatever, to it. and then we're let's what about put a bunch the, of what about holes the corners and just do like rails and then screw into the rails. That's not a tat, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? you can yeah. do it. You think that's how people do it? No, they, it's the they, expense. They, they put screws oh. in the yeah. They run right through the side of it with a yep. self tap screw, or you could just build a fence. Yeah, like, <laughs> on the outside, just build yeah. a fence. Uh, can I go back to your LA house? How big is that? Uh, it's, Ballpark. It's uh, I think around sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred. It's, yeah, it's not that big. Okay. But do you you have like a a workshop or something? I, yeah, I yeah. converted my backyard into a a metal shop, wood shop. Yeah. Didn't you have like a stage at one point in the back? I did. Yeah. On top of my for, hot tub for all your uh, yeah. So you had a hot tub with a stage on top. <laughs> I, I made a st so stage on top of it. Yeah. So what, what's I had, the, I had a band the, up there? The Wilkins compound is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's where all the big parties happened. <laughs> they did. Yeah. <laughs> Can I you know. tell us more about the party? Yeah. Uh, not just now. one. <laughs> don't no, don't name names, but I want a good story. Yeah. There's now that I know stories. that that's how you party, I have I want to think it. about it. It was a long time ago. Okay. A long time ago. Pre-COVID, anyway. <laughs> Pre-COVID, this definitely. Pre eons ago. Uh, question: How much do you think your house is worth now in LA? Uh, I think they said it was like eight fifty nine hundred. You got your calculator still? Sure. Here? Oh, at sixteen hundred. <laughs> is that what you want? Price yeah. per square foot is what yeah. you're doing. I got it. You're looking at hot, um, not including the hot tub. Conservatively, <laughs> yeah, right. Conservatively, uh, in that part of the world, then you're looking at five hundred and thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents a square foot. Yeah. So, so um, that, that's, that's my mortgage. But that's basically why you need, uh, you know, ADUs because who the hell can, yeah, afford so, close to a million bucks for a uh, oh, sixteen hundred square yeah, foot house? Right? I was like, really, I was really lucky. I I bought it. You bought it years ago. I bought right? it after the earthquake. Which earthquake? The 1994 earthquake. 94. You got it cheap. So so it now, was expensive to me because yeah. my first house was 80 grand, and that was in Denver, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now that you know what how much is that worth? 1.2. Yes. <laughs> that's a while. So that's the other thing, right? Like property values have continued to climb. Yeah. So the reason you're here is to you know help us all understand the. How much the, pricing has increased, right? Yeah, I don't or know. I, I would real hate to be young now. Up. It would suck. You, how would you buy a house? You couldn't. You'd have to buy it in some little town somewhere and then just... No, no, no. We're in a little town, man, and a manufactured home is 321000 before land. Yeah, I guess so housing is just expensive. I guess feet. this is why there's so many homeless people, I'm yeah. guessing. And there's if a, only there was a solution that somebody could provide oh right. like yeah like, like a what smaller you guys are doing yeah yeah, yeah exactly. something like that so but but for, like we've talked about if you look at old old school uh, residential developments um almost all of those homes have an addition on them 
Right. Right. So yeah. they started at 400 or 600 square feet. Right. And then uh, they they then had a child. Yeah. Or, or however. And yeah, they're like, when they had the money, right? Room. Yeah. They added on. Yeah. Sometimes they added on three of the four sides of the fucking house, right? You can go For into these. For sure my dad did that. 100%, right? And now all of a sudden, the way that the code is written, you can't build a house that size legally here anyway and add on as you go. The minimum square footage requirement for residential is over 850 square feet in this town. So until you have 200 grand to start your house, you don't get a fucking starter house. So if you bought a piece of what you're telling me is if you bought a piece of property here and said, I want to build a house, but I only want it 600 square feet. Can't do it. You can't can't do it. No, correct. And and hold on. What property are you buying? How much was your first house? 80,000. 80,000. So there's a residential lot available for sale now in Florence. That's listed on the market. It's $55,000. Bare land. The lot. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Right. So then you still got to build the house, right? That's got to be at least... 800 well, square feet. But I don't understand why you can't. The way that build, the, the, the well, local. That's a stupid law. I agree. That's, that's our argument. I mean, because, it, you know, if you're a young kid and, you know, you want to build your house, mm-hmm. you know, why can't you build something that's small that you can fit into? Exactly. And then you, know? you can grow with it. Yeah. And um, then you might move out and some other kid can Or you buy may it. add on. Whatever. Or, sure. Whichever, right? You yeah. have the options yeah, at that yeah, point. There you go. But you don't have options if you get no equity. Right. And that's what the rental market is is done. And so what we've got are now. You, so are you saying it's it's skewed towards people that consolidation um, of wealth? Got it. I'm saying that, that if you have makes enough, sense. Yeah, if you already have money, wow. you can buy another one yeah. or obtain another larger so mortgage. Money makes money. And then you can rent it to somebody right. that's at a dollar amount too high for that person to be able to save money right. for their own down payment. Got it. It's like, so there they sit. It's rental like the market edu- only. It's like the education. Mm-hmm. So but also like the the yes. people don't understand that you know. Sage, how many square feet are you living in right now? About 400. 400. So if you had a house that was 400 square feet, you'd be fine, right? Yeah. And you would have okay. equity. There you go. And, and when the market comes it. up, you could leverage back out and right. you could So there's on. somebody preventing you from doing that. Wow. Because there's That's a law really in place crazy. in a fucking town crazy. where historically not, there are not, 400 square foot houses. That. Like there are four, there used to be 400 square foot houses right. in, in this town, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they all got added on to, right. and you know, so now they're yeah. bigger, I mean, but nobody back took those day. additions off. Nobody said, Ooh, let's go back and take the additions off right. because you, you're paying 250 for that house. So if you took the extra right. square footage off, you'd be, you know, upside down, but you also can't build a 400 square foot house. So did you ever ask whoever had this law made that question? Like, why are you doing I did. this? And I what did they in, say? And I, I, I had I asked it in a, in a smart ass way because that's one of the oh, only ways I know how to communicate. Really, I walked in and I said, um, "We're looking." Yeah, for... I would listen to the other podcast, by yeah, the way. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, but but here's how the, the interaction went. I said, um, "I need I want to build a house this size," right. and this was actually in the county because I was looking at a parcel at the time, and and in the county it's 450 square feet. I, she said, "Our minimum is 450 square feet," and I said, "I don't want to build a 450 square foot house." She said, "Oh well, we brought it down from 800 and something." And I'm like. That's great. I don't, again, care. What's the maximum square footage was my question. And she said, well, there is no maximum square footage. And I'm like, so how could you have a bookend on a cover on the front, but not the back? Right. Well, it is built in because that's dependent on your parcel. You can usually only build 40 to 50%. Right. Right. So if you had and 70 you know, acres, right. And everything. Right. Yeah. if you had 70 acres, you know, you could have a 35 acre house. Right. Um, <laughs> legally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is fucked and insane. If you think about it, it makes no actual sense. So I go, why wouldn't we have smaller lots? You can still use your you can still use your calculation for forty percent. Right. I don't understand like what we're doing here. Maybe because they don't want a bunch of tiny little houses everywhere. They already had them a hundred years ago. I'm just saying. I know. So I do we just blame the nineteen eighties, the all the access there? Like let's get bigger houses and more. It's just archaic now when you have building materials are super high. Land is hard to find that's developable. It's like I understand how we got to where we are. Now we have to change it to move right. forward. It's simple. I like where you're coming from. So let's just fix I really, it. I really do. I, I, it makes Thank sense. Yeah. But there's no motivation for the people who already are, have the wealth. <laughs> who already have the wealth to change anything. And they're the ones who sit on boards and have the time. and, and discre- Like there are uh, many, I'll say, are um, retired. You know what I mean? Now it's it's like when they're giving back. And I'm like, then please actually give back. Right. We're not, not take away. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't limit opportunities for right. the young people. Right. We need to open opportunities. Yeah, you and need help. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. This country needs help. Yeah. For sure. And and um and we're trying. 
And so helping people understand, like, if I can't buy a house for less than $200,000, because healthcare costs, because education costs, it, this now I'll never be able to own it. And instead of you continuing to harp that you need, I need to buy a house. um, You don't need to give me a house. You need to give me an opportunity. And that's what we need Yeah, is a different opportunity yeah. because right now- And you're the, willing to work for it. The math is broken. That That's just basics. The math yeah, I mean, is broken. People right now are working three jobs and can't yeah. afford an apartment. No, I know. Like it's it's not like we're, or people are lazy. Like, no, right. I need you to give me a house or right. a cheap place right. to live. Right, right. Because I want to have my feet up or whatever. It's like, no, I'm already working three jobs, yeah. still can't afford a place yeah. to live. Yeah. I have four roommates. Yeah, I live crazy. in a basement. Like, have a what? kid. That's a yeah. full-time job. You know, by the time you add healthcare and having a child together, anybody that's younger that's got a kid, I mean, well, and then, holy what, shit. And then what's going to happen is kind of what's happening in Los Angeles, you know, all the homeless, where you can't even walk down the sidewalk because, yeah. you, you know, like if you were, you know, had to, if you were handicapped or whatever and had to, you know, stroll down the street in your uh, wheelchair or whatever, and you, right. yeah, there you are out in the street. Yeah. Right. Because you can't go down the sidewalk. And the city's, I guess, fine with it. It's kind of crazy. Holy I drove by the other day, and I, I actually, the guy had his tarp open. He had a full-blown kitchen in there. He was tapping off the power thing. He had water from the from the fire hydrant. They tapped into that, and he had a slide. Bring me that guy. Seriously, you should see this video. <laughs> Bring me someone that resourceful. It's correct. Yeah, no. Not it's, fucking joking it's, at it's, all. Get him it here. Is, they He's have, got a job. They have like a little wash station. They got a, 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 one of those pot, porta potties down right there. It's crazy. So California has now become a third world country because uh, I've, well, I've seen that. In I mean, it's a lot always kind of been. Which you know, <laughs> I mean, really. No, I mean, I, I've traveled quite a bit, and I've seen that basically wow. in a lot of other countries. So, so I mean, but so, there, so but there's a solution, that, and the, that's but, exactly and, and the fight that we're we're doing that's what I'm saying. here if, is if that you, you need be able to do what you want to do, then smaller lots. I yeah. mean, we just. Pass the ADU code here, where the one of the arguments was, well, we don't want to allow ADUs on smaller lots. I'm like, but this whole town was designed on twenty foot, twenty five foot wide lots. Just the fact that those lot lines were obliterated when somebody wanted to expand their house, that doesn't mean that's not historically what was needed in this town. This town used to have like fifteen hotels. This was a booming oh, yeah. town. This whole county was oil was right? was huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, oil, coal. coal. We had like three brick factories. Yeah. We had every mm-hmm. major yeah. like retail chain in Canyon City downtown. And now it's like, what do we have? McDonald's and a Taco Bell. Yikes! Like, so, it, it, like there's nothing. There's a Walmart. So like, what happened to the industry? What happened to all the workers that needed housing? And Brad was here, and we were talking about him. Like, yeah, we got to hire twenty people. Where are they going to live? Yeah. Where do we, where and do even we if we hire local kids and they want to move out of their parents' basement or extra bedroom or right. whatever, where are they going to go? Yeah. They, there's nothing to rent, nothing to buy, well, even with a good job. What I was IT. thinking in Los Angeles, you know, with everyone, you know, not able to afford a place, so they kicked out on the street, right? Mm-hmm. And so here you have all these people on the street. And 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 then what happens? Then, then the government steps in and – Builds these homes for three million dollars. Somebody's getting a kickback, and 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 you have all these little homes, right? Yeah. And and whereas you're saying, hey, you know, I'm resourceful. I don't really want to be homeless. Whatever. If I could just have the opportunity to build a small house on on you know somebody's lot or whatever, you right. know, then it's, they could then they could do that. And that adds back to to something I did last night. I finally got onto the website, onto the Fire Age Homes website, and added the opportunity for yourself, anybody that goes. Um, I don't know how to build a house, but I want to put in sweat equity and I want to figure it right. out. I want to learn. Cool. Sweat I set equity. it up so that I will build it with you. Right. Okay. So as a licensed contractor, right. as a professional builder, right. right? So that you don't not do something correctly. Yeah. So that you know how to do so it correctly. Safe. And then after that, you take, for the cost of a bachelor's degree, you take the house with you wherever you're going to go, right? And then you have a perspective, you have a, a portfolio to show a future employer or customer if you're going to do this professionally, mm. an example of the home. Got it. Right? Like, I can't build them all. We can't want to build them right, all. Right, we need right. a fucking million houses, like, in a month, right, for all these people. So, you, so you're talking, like, almost like a Class. vocational school. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You come here, but you get all the way through. You see all the trades. 
either you 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 see how the sausage you think is people made, will like, pick that up one time you know what i mean do you know what i'm saying because that's record a lot it. of learning record it yeah. video yeah. it do you know what i mean yep or, and, and I, I or think, you can build 10 houses who's stopping you yeah I, I mean, there is there is a there is something to be said about sitting there watching a guy do something. Hundred you know? percent. And I've I've worked in old remodels with people that just said, "Hey, I, I really want a tour guide for this," and I go, "Okay, you know, like I'll I'll build it with you. You can ask me all the questions you want. Right. I'll show you how to do whatever you want to do." It's called apprenticeship. It's an apprenticeship. Which, uh, doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. And this is me going like, "No, no you it can does. have." It does. Yeah, they do. Plumbing, plumbing, oh, electrical. They so. still do that. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yep. And that's a number of hours worked under, uh, you know, a, a licensed person in that particular trade. Because right? uh, I, I looked into it a couple of years ago because I couldn't find a plumber. And I would have, like, become a licensed plumber faster than I could find a plumber locally. Because I looked into it. Okay, I can go to school this many months. So weird, got Barna. it. Apprenticeship. You're such a I'm weirdo. like, during my apprenticeship, it. can I work on my own project? Because, I mean, I'll hire... You're such Whoever I'm apprenticing under, hire them to work on this. Like, I could have been a plumber in less time than it took to find a good plumber. But because you, that's how... Do you have plumber's crack? <laughs> keeping it light here. I own a belt. <laughs> For the record, plumber's crack is, is Red Bull. I know. I, I'm sorry. It's, I'm kidding. It's, 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 it's what? It's Red Bull. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a joke. It's drywall. It's crack. Donuts. Don't, don't, don't mind. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, um, and we've had the good fortune. Oh, I, I, before stuff, I forget, I, I wanted to add some of the, the whole homeless thing out there. <clears throat> uh, we took a trip, and there is a podcast actually called uh, California City. Look it up. Okay. It's like six hours, and it's the uh, whole uh, history of California City, which is a little bit north of Edwards Air Force Base okay. near Mojave. And uh, it's 52 square miles, and uh, – it's all laid out. It's got uh, water, you know, mm-hmm. and all that. It's all, you know, it's all all the plumbing, all the stuff's already out there. So the infrastructure, is infrastructure there. is yeah. pretty much yeah. laid out out there. Uh, and it's empty, you know. They were trying to build homes and stuff. Um, and it was a whole scam thing. But anyways, um, and I kept thinking, why are they taking this park away? You know, in my neighborhood. You know, and, and I'm serious. And, and why can't they take all these people and, and build the homes out there where they have space? And not only that, they could build like uh, like uh, some kind of community center, an educational thing out there, uh, some kind of medical thing, and just kind of have their own little community so, to be, get a fresh that, start. That's more than $2 million, number one. Number but, two, hold on. Um it's, but it could have you, them to get a, a new fresh start. They could, th- this they could, was a discussion before is where um, housing is basically how the cost of housing is in relation to how close you are to opportunity. Mm-hmm. So if you want to be able to get a job, you got to be where the jobs are. And that means if you put me out in the middle of nowhere, then if you build a community center, the training center, whatever, I still got to go back to the big city to get the job. But I'm still homeless because I still can't afford that. Mm. It's the traditional so inner city. Issue. You have to be wow. close to that opportunity to get okay. the job. That's fair. To get the job. You're so, so smart, I mean, Barna. It's crazy. I, I learned from all the awesome, really smart people on oh, the seriously, podcast. Seriously, you're amazing. Because I don't know anything. So like, this is just, one of those things where we studied like in criminal justice, right? And, you and did too? I have a bachelor's in criminal justice studies, yeah. And you're, you have, and you're a plumber? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Close. We're all, we're, it's so we're all sad, there. isn't it? Close. So, so, but I specialize of, in database design, but whatever. That's <laughs> inside of inside of that discussion. Um, a lot of the times, inner city crime rates X, Y, and Z. Right. Really, what there's a population of people there, and there aren't enough jobs. Traditional inner cities, right? And so, I've heard from numerous people like, well, you know, move away from the inner city, where there are more jobs. And I go, yeah, okay. So, did the person who said that? I usually ask. Um, did you move away from your family? Did you move away from your home? Most of them, the answer is no, right? So don't discount the fact that people are from where they're from, and that's where their family is from, and that's where their life is from. And so uprooting, not only is it expensive as fuck, and if you don't have a job, how are you going to come up with the money to move, A? What guaranteed it where you're going, there is a safe place for you to be and a job for you to be employed by? So if you want to do an outreach thing and, and, and offer that opportunity but to people, it's, you can. It, 
But it's not just that. So, but it's a bigger to issue than that. So when I lived in Columbus, um, one of the guys I got get salvaged from, he lives in the inner city, right? Sure. And he's like, man, real estate prices have gone up. I'm like, man, I know in Colorado they they shot way up. I you know you could buy a house for fifty grand in Florence or Canyon City. Now it's like two hundred fifty is like right. the kind of the bottom or two hundred grand. He's like, oh no, um, I bought my house for six thousand dollars, and they shot up to. Thirty six thousand dollars. I'm like thirty six thousand dollars for what size house? I'll take oh, five. three four three four bedroom Victorian, right with a decent yard, but it's not in a good neighborhood. So even if you try to move, you're yeah. gonna sell your house for thirty six thousand dollars. Where are you gonna go? And you're gonna go out to um, like northern part of Columbus that's growing, tons of jobs, everybody's hiring. Six hundred. Right. You don't even have enough are you for kidding? the down. A condo is six hundred thousand dollars. Don't even have enough for the down payment. No, <laughs> At that that's point. barely enough money to move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and rent a hotel room or a and a because you can't get an apartment. The right. apartment's twenty four hundred a month. So so what you're saying is the solution is tiny homes or a solution. No, there there Small. are many solutions. I mean, so so for housing, the solution right now is allowing smaller lot sizes, allowing duplexes, allowing ADUs allowing smaller square footages and allowing different building styles like a shipping container where you don't have to spend $10 for a stick of two by four. Right. Right. Because if your construction costs went up five X and the only way to get around that is to buy a box that's already has all that stuff in it. See now I, if I was to do that and I thought about it, I would get like two or three of them or maybe four. And build it in like, because I saw one somewhere, I can't remember where it was, where he built them parallel and they had one in the back. And then he had, I think he had one on top of that one. Mm-hmm. And then he covered the front with like a tarp. So it was really, it was, it was gorgeous. And he like, painted them black. Like and, a shade sail. Yeah. Somewhere that, but not like, like a blue tarp, like from or, Home or Depot or something. Or put two together and knock a couple doors or cut yeah. the center out, whatever, so it's a little bigger. I mean, that's that's what I would do. That's fine, and and you can do it that way. Every time you create an opening, you create an opening for money to fall out of, right? Sure. So that's that's but one. Still, but still, instead of living in a trailer, right? But you were just over at our project. Yeah. You were inside of two separate units. Yeah. Right. Upstairs unit and a, right. a ground level unit. One of them is three hundred and twenty square feet. One of them is one hundred and ninety two square feet. Right. Livable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so right? so hold on. Just you made like, a comment like living in a trailer. So when you're in L.A. <laughs> Where do you live? Uh, currently, I'm living in my trailer. Your job trailer. <laughs> Which is how big? It's uh, smaller than that. Yeah. And you work where? <laughs> in Hollywood. In yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. As he so hold on. Let me, yeah. let me recap this. You live in Hollywood. It's of COVID. You have a resume <laughs> longer than I've ever seen in my life, just going up to 2017. We're going to pretend you're, you've are you been unemployed yeah, since then, pretty right? That's true. So you live in a 8 by 24 trailer it, yeah and you work in hollywood yeah all right just just making sure it's comfortable so yeah uh, like so it. the people <laughs> so the people who are on the street if they don't work in hollywood don't have a resume this long where are they supposed to live um i heard one guy's got a fire hydrant for water um <laughs> blue tire. there was mr captain resourceful out there in la yeah. who I, I seriously a want to hire um if you're if you're that if you're that if resourceful, you're, if you're that guy if you're the guy dude, if you're, listening right now but if, if you're that resourceful out. and if you can go well uh this is what i need i'm gonna find a way to get it done yeah you're fucking right you have the you have the right yeah approach to life i'll figure it out Thank you for listening to another episode of our podcast. Go to our website, notatinyhousepodcast.com for show notes and how to contact us. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Not A Tiny House and on Instagram at Not A Tiny House Podcast. If you listened this far, you probably enjoyed the podcast and found the content valuable. Go ahead and share it with your friends and on social media. Please rate or review our podcast and follow us to get notified about our next episode. And we'll talk to you next time on It's Not A Tiny House.